So this is the um, Davies Craig uh, electric water pump and the Mokal coolant to um, oil intercooler and uh, it's going to work, I've, it'll fit, but I have some serious issues that haven't been resolved. One is that the fittings, these um, aluminum fittings, the N20 fittings that screw into um, the pump, uh, the plastic pump transition to the N20 um, hose ends, that they're, they were machined incorrectly and I actually they don't thread on properly. So I've contacted them, I haven't heard back yet, but uh, that's a no-go point. I can't uh, go any further until, and unfortunately they're in Australia. So um, yeah, they just um, the threads haven't been cut deep enough so that the uh, the hose ends don't screw on properly. Um, the Mocal unit here, you can uh, you can see when the threads are all the way in, it's just um, good. It, it, you know it uh, bottoms out nicely, and otherwise it's loose. These things they just it's like a MPT fitting where it just gets tighter and tighter as you try to thread it on. And you can actually see that the, the base of the threads are, are tapered wider as, it, as, it, as you go towards the back. Anyway, hopefully I will resolve that. Uh, the other problem is the, um, I'll just show you how this stuff mounts. The other problem is the um, radiator, custom radiator, which was supposed to have shipped yesterday. Ha <laughs> ha From the second manufacturer. And uh, they called up and said, oh, um, can't do the 27 inch wide cord, it's got to be 26. I didn't even know there's a 26 available, so instead of inch and a half wide tanks, because the whole thing's 30 inches wide, um, it'll be two inch wide tanks so they can fit the Orb 20 uh, fittings. So there I've actually screwed the Orb 20 fitting, it's just got an O-ring on it. So all the radiator fittings are Orb 20s. So the way this works, um, so I'm going to have to readjust the camera here and hold things at the same time. So this, um, okay, let's see if I can get this to behave. Okay, so down she goes. So the radiator is mounted here. The dash 20 fittings at the bottom of the radiator. So that's the outlet of the radiator going supporting. So it's actually physically, the radiator is going to physically support this pump that's going to free hang. And it sounds a bit crazy, but the pump doesn't weigh that much. Um, so it hangs down here just before the starter. And then below there, you can see the. Uh, 90 degree dash 20 hose end fitting pointing towards the front engine mount. So that's where that fits. And uh, you know, there's not a ton of room to spare, but it works. It's, uh, it's good. It actually looks nice there. It looks like it belongs there. So anyway, that's where that goes. I'll set this down. Crash here. And I'll pick up the MoCal piece. This is actually beautiful. I don't, you can pull it towards the light. You can see how it flows, there's a jacket where the, the water flows through this inner, inner jacket. Anyway, um, the problem is that oil fitting, I've got a very low profile dash 8 fitting on the bottom. It actually sticks down, it's almost as low as the oil pan, but it's four to the oil pan, about six inches, so there's a tiny chance that if I ran the car up in the front spoiler onto a concrete block, I'd hit that, which wouldn't be very good for the oil system. So anyway, so this has to sit, it bolts in um, on that cross member frame. Kind of a tight fit where that tape is where the other end fitting in, so there's gonna be not much hose length. And then this mounts right in there. And then the output of that goes straight into the, um, where the old water pump posing, which has been hollowed out, where it just it connects straight into there with the slip fit uh, and the clamp. Um, and then of course the oil cooler connections go go right to there. So that's the uh, that's what's going on there. And uh, as I said, so the radiator is going to be delayed because the we have to get the other core in. It'll come in the middle of next week. Then they're going to fabricate it and ship it out. So maybe only a one week delay in getting the radiator. And then these fittings, you know. God damn it. The only thing I can think of is that if the guys at Davies Craig let me down and say, well, there's nothing we can do, sorry. Um, you know, there's a $350 die. It's a 1 and 5 eighths dash 12 thread, SAE thread on a dash 20 fitting. And I could always get a super expensive die 
and get it uh, and and re and recut it myself. But you know, spend three hundred bucks um, to recut those, or maybe grab another fitting, cut that fitting off, weld the other fitting on, and machine it. I'm uh, just a nightmare thinking about it. But um, hopefully, these guys will solve the problem. I had a bunch of dash sixteen fittings for this. I maybe should have stayed with dash sixteen. But I wanted the extra flow of the Dash 20, but I realized now the pump really wouldn't use the capability of a one and a quarter inch line. So one inch line probably would have been adequate. But anyway, the Dash 16 fittings are anodized and they look beautiful. And these things are raw, you know, rough, rough machined. So something, something's wrong with the, the, this, this batch that I got. Anyway, that's it. I will uh, sign out for now. I'm going to work on the... Uh, heater box. I got all the bits and foam and everything so I'm going to finish that this weekend and do a little bit more work on the intake system because uh, I've got a few more things done uh, in parts that have showed up so kind of filling in for you. So this is a little bit better video um, lighting just to show you briefly so there's the um, coolant to oil intercooler, the Mocal on the left and then the um, Davies Craig, um, the Australian guys, the um, EWP80, so they're uh, 80 liter per minute um, pump, and um, hopefully I'll get the um, better fittings for the water pump uh, soon, and the radiator next week, and then we'll be able to start hooking all the stuff up together. Another thing, um, there's a bunch of sensors that I've managed to find. This was the, um, these are the sensors for um, uh, the speed from the transmission. So the old style of the 020 uh, Mark 1, uh, Mark 2 transmission was to have a mechanical cable attached um, and this is a Hall effect sensor from the Mark 3. Still works with the original transmission which is awesome. So I actually got two copies of that plus the connectors just because um, in the past I was fooling around with the Hall effect sensor for the cam position I ended up uh, damaging it while testing it, so I ordered two of them, just so if I bust one I don't uh, worry about it, but it turns out that the actual sensor's got the um, plus minus in, you know, power and output uh, marked clearly on it, so I hopefully won't make any mistakes um, on that. And another sensor, um, the one with the cable on it is the um, crank position sensor, the original um, inductive analog sensor that came with the ABEA um, block or the ABF in the ERP. So the ABA ABF blocks, the Mark III blocks have the 60-2 tooth crank position sensor for the computer but they use this um, wiggly analog sine wave output and um, you can actually get a modern digital Hall effect sensor version of it that's used on um, Audi Mercedes engines um, and that's this other one here so I was able to actually locate the part and instead of getting um, having to have a signal conditioning circuit to derive the um, the, the falling edge of uh, when each tooth uh, goes around by the sensor the Hall effect sensor gives you a nice um, you know digital 12 volt uh, square wave and I was able to get the uh, connector for it as well so it's nice obviously you know get a connector <laughs> to fit into the sensor. Then you have to determine the pinout, but I, again I was able to find a, um, a spec sheet of the Bosch sensor so I know which pin is high and low and input output, that kind of stuff. So here's the Canon filter that um, I have two of them. Um, one here, one here. So they will mount at an angle. Uh, they'll mount at an angle like this. Uh, and then there'll be a um, clear polycarbonate uh, um, air box that runs along the top here and connects in. It's kind of still ordering. I got some Lexan material there. I need some more for the backing, thicker plate for the back. But uh, having these things mounted is, uh, should, should provide lots of airflow. So a little tricky, but I. And I almost. Uh, forgot to put the fuel pressure sensor for the computer in the system so I have the uh, regulator with the um, you know 
analog gauge and then the uh, digital sensor and the uh, uh, the back pressure sensor in the back so let's uh and so I've tapped the uh, uh, the throttle body vacuum ports for the 116th MPT since I got the uh, the um, tapping tool yesterday so this logs all done I'm gonna polish it up polish the back plate up drill a few more mounting holes in it and then send it out for anodizing so it's all pretty